northeast at uh, three miles per hour <laughs> with a lightly cloudy sky. It's looking good. But we're not going to see any ridiculous situations like that yet. We're going to get right into the action for Rafiex and Dill. Uh, Game one going to be on time in City. Very interesting pick for Dill, purely because Rob has, in my opinion, the most lethal down throw 50-50 in the game. It is so strong. And we actually saw Dill, sorry, Rafi earlier fight Wolf, another New York-based Sheik. Although, you know, Dill definitely on, you know, a couple, like, you know, Dill is top top 10, Wolf is top 25, of course. Um, but Damn, why you gotta do our boy like that? <laughs> it's, it's his, it was his tag, it was his tag. Um, but anyway, so this is gonna be a lot more of the patience. Dill actually down in percent at the moment, and he's taking even more, and we see the reset. It's going to be the 50-50. He air dodges through. That was the clutch air dodge. Now Dill reciprocating some of that damage with forward airs of his own. Not going to be able to get any fancy plays out of it like Rafi, but he is going to secure the stage control that he needs. Rafi going for the YOLO reads. All right. Honestly, like, Rob's up smash is surprisingly safe. Not, like, you know, super safe, but, like, it's... It can be difficult to actually get the punish on it, especially if he's so far away like that. Okay, going for this back throw, getting more and more percent. We have a tie in terms of uh, the actual damage that these two have on each other. Oh, that's going to be big. Not going to take the stock, though. That is one of the advantages of Time and City for Dill, is the fact that those up airs will actually kill Rob, <laughs> as opposed to, like, normally, in which they don't ever kill. Unfortunate reversal of the projectile is going to leave Rafi vulnerable for Dill to be able to slide in, get the first stock. And I think it's worth mentioning that where most people like to joke around saying Sheik has difficulty killing, that a lot of her tools are less potent, you bring up a very good point. The more dynamic platforms, the, uh, the smaller blast zones, all properties <laughs> that allow Sheik to just be more dangerous as a character. <laughs> oh, what? He's making it back. Now, he remembers that Rob's got good recovery, right? <laughs> well, to be fair, though, he has very low fuel, so, okay. I thought that maybe Dill would, like, really push the advantage, get him off stage. But, nah, Dill is just going to, I'm going to go, I went for the cheeky thing. It didn't quite work. Let me just go back to my regular game plan. Very uncharacteristic of Dill, and he ended up paying the price for it. Nonetheless, he still does have the control of this game with 44% built up on Rafi. Dill thought he was out of fuel, so he just wanted to push him down. I mean, I like that, but that's a big robot. There's a lot of fuel in there. <laughs> All right, good job with the just getting more and more damage. But, you know, as Rob gets more and more damage, the rage builds and builds, and just that the throw combos are so, so scary. So far, Dill's been guessing really, actually, really right with a lot of these. Even his own 50-50s he's been pretty good with. But he just needs to mess it up once at higher percents. Oh, I thought he was going to die. again. Want, he wanted it again. This time, being a bit more careful to track the fuel that Rob has for recovering, as his recovery, as good as it is, is in fact limited. Okay, this is going to be huge. Gets the air dodge read, but so far down by the end of it. So that was really smart from Dill because if he, if, think about the 50-50 like this. If he didn't air dodge and he got up aired at the top there, he would have died. But because he air dodged that late, he actually managed to make it back down. The last hit though, going to connect. Wow. And that's all they need. Rafi managing to take game one over Dill. And I feel like a lot of that was just Rafi just weathering the storm. Dill trying to answer for every possible option Damaging Rafi all the way through, but it, honestly, I think it was Dill who ended up playing himself throughout that entire set. Yeah, and I mean, he w Dill was really strong for most of it. I think probably one of the deciding factors was trying to get cheeky. Yeah. Um, if he didn't do that, I think probably, you know, never, you never know with Rob, just he's so hard to actually net a stock on, and, you know, he abuses rage so well. But I feel like if Dill didn't throw his stock away with that down air, Probably could have taken it, so if he plays a little bit more careful now, we'll see if perhaps we get a different result. So right out the gate, just a single needle storm, just to mark a lead that Dill can have. Uh, I don't think it's going to pay off in the long scheme of things, though I think it's worth noting what type of tool needle storm is in this match. Ooh, all right, getting some nice damage there, 39% already, and now a ledge guard situation. Dill able to get more and more 65 now on Rafi as he's, oh, and again with the bouncing fish. All right. We see you, Dill. Okay, finally, Rafi abusing the auto cancel there, able to 
get out of the corner. But he's already taken 75%, 82 now. He needs to get something started if he wants to. Oh, I mean, hey, there's your shot grenade you wanted, but not doing any good for Dill. Rafi's still managing to put out some sort of an aggression despite being at a severe percentage deficit. <laughs> oh, trying to get cheeky with those Z drops, but I mean, it covers a little bit of space, but didn't really get him that much. And right now, 28% on Dill. Ooh, I really like that. Knowing that uh, Rafi is scared to air dodge, goes for these other options. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Rafi just not air dodging at all. Managing to catch the gyro once again, getting control of it. And just as we were mentioning coming into this set, the item play and the ability to neutralize that item play are taking a pivotal role into this. As we've seen Dilt take the gyro, sit in shield, wait out the laser, and a lot of that zoning pressure that Rafi has managed to build up onto his opponents throughout the rest of the evening is, for all intents and purposes, nullified against Dilt. Dilt being able to freely move in place defensively as he wants without having to take into account the space that Rafi has could be covering because he isn't. Oh, that was so good. Reads the roll. That was the air dodge that we didn't see Rafi bust out the entire game so far. 45% now on Dill. Rafi going for the right mix-ups right now. He just needs a little bit more percent, and Dill actually has to be really scared of a grab combo. Max rage on him is definitely terrifying. Wow, Dill just playing so evasive, just not getting hit. You can tell that's his priority. And he manages to catch him dropping shield, but the bouncing fish doesn't actually do it. 163% on Rafi, as right now Dill needs to find some way to actually net the stock. Ooh, tries to reset onto the platform now with 54%. Oh, back air still not doing it. Wow, the survivability on Rafi is astounding. Forward air is gonna manage to take off the stock though, finally sitting at 180 plus. Dill with gyro in hand still trying to move this momentum ever further. He doesn't necessarily have to approach, but he's going to anyways because he's seen how well he can build up that percentage onto Rafi. Okay, good neutral air from Rafi, just get more damage. The neutral air is relatively safe, but at the same time, you know, he's down by a lot. He needs to, he needs to start the throw combos I think are going to be so crucial for him. I think the main reason that we haven't seen a lot of those from Rafi is because he hasn't been in a position where he can get anything fruitful out of them if he doesn't want to stale them. Finally coming back to the stage with some ground to stand on, he gets a kill out of it just as you were projecting. Oh, and now that was, and also like, Dill was actually playing so well and evasive from the grabs, but like Rafi kind of wasn't going for them because he knew that that was like the perfect percent for when he could actually, you know, take him out with the up air. And that's another big factor. Rafi can't afford to stale any of his moves. You've seen how well he can build up damage with the same several moves, but what he needs to kill, he can't afford to mess up or else Dill can take advantage of that and extend the game further and further. He DI's out, but he is surviving. Ooh, a really nice job. Okay, this is actually going this to be huge. Good kill, but oh. we're not going to see it connect just yet. If that killed, I actually would have... Yo, I would have left. I would have chortled. Yeah, That's but weird. instead, uh, Rafi not actually getting the stock there. He ends up getting up aired 124%. He's living, but... Ooh, nice use of the up B. That's a landing mix-up we haven't really seen from him yet. Yeah, we can, he, he's sort of looking for the, we saw this earlier, he's gonna try and nickel and dime, get enough percent so that he can actually start going for the kill setups. But right now, again, guess is right on that 50-50, keeping himself in it. Still trying to go for some sort of higher play right now, but Rafi forced below the stage, using the back air to be able to cross up to the opposite side of Smashville. He's coming back with 140%, his laser charging, gyro in hand, Rafi could try to extend this, but I think it's worth noting at least 75 seconds in counting left on the clock. Oh, I didn't, I didn't even notice. Yeah, no, a timeout is absolutely a factor here. Not even because of the patience, but just because of the fact that Dill is taking so long to kill. Oh, this actually might be it if he doesn't guess right and he falls out of it. Really lucky for Dill there. Ninjas to get past and finds a back air. Wow. We're going to game three. Oh. Oh, the pressure building onto both of those players immensely. So now we're can moving we, on to game three. Can we talk about how Ravi's just standing with so much conviction right now? Yeah, he's obviously I, he's the one who like stands up after every game as if he just won the set. He looks like a man who's ready to duel in the town square. <laughs> this is the climax of a West a spaghetti it's, western. It's high noon. <laughs> 
Anyway, I, I didn't want to do the actual McCree voice because I was afraid that might be like copyright infringement. Yeah, no, I didn't care about that. <laughs> oh. Game three, where's it taking us? We're seeing them drift all over the place. Coming back and forth to Lilat and Battlefield, two really large stages that both Rob and she can perform excellently on. It's right. going to be Dreamland as the pick. I definitely agree with this for Rafi. You know, the lower ceiling means he doesn't have to worry about, you know, his up air not killing. Although, really, when does up air not kill? Right. Um, but the wider blast zones, we're seeing just how many. I think, like, almost every stock Dill has had, if not every stock, has been off the side. So just purely the blast zones themselves will help out Rafi. In addition, those platforms can help him out as well, keeping him uh, a little, giving him a little bit of, you know, umbrella protection from uh, some of Dill's approaches. Ooh. We'll see how the stage pick ends up panning out, but ultimately it's really about if Rafi can sort of slow down Dill and prevent Dill from stopping his item play. Keeping this gyro control of his and being able to just shield the lasers is mitigating so much damage that we've seen Rafi being able to build up time and time again on his opponents. Just okay. gonna get caught in a restand, goes for the uh, bouncing fish just to continue damage. These nares really not working out for Rafi. I feel like it's just not fast enough of an option. Oh, there's oh. the top. Um, okay, he has. That's really bad. No way, is he dead? He's, He's gone. Dead. That early, guys. It's. <laughs> It's he like is Rob painful. is a bad character, except he has that. Yeah. So he, I guess he's a good character. Don't sleep on the beat boop. Rob really coming out. Showing It'll kill now. Never mind. No, yeah. <laughs> Not that great of a move. But with 85% builds up, if Rafi can hold this percentage and this stock well, there's a chance we can see the two stock occur. It's all about Rafi can build up the damage necessary. And if he can pressure Dill back on the stage, but getting the grab. The follow-up forward air is just going to continue this offstage pressure. Oh, what a nice back air. He's going to be offstage here. Not okay, yeah. Dill going to reset, and he needs to stand on the stage, I believe, to get fuel back. Yes. So, oh, going out really deep there, but gets the auto-cancel and the air dodge read of his own to pretty much even this up now with 37% on him. Rafi even slapping his head, recognizing that he just fell right into the classic 50-50 trap of the Sheiks and losing a fantastic lead that he already built up, but with 46% still built up onto Dill. Victory is still within sight for both of these players. And it's not so much like the percent lead that matters, it's the fact that he's like two hits away from Bipu being a factor. One hit away from B Poop being a factor. So, yeah, right now, Dill trying to, he's being very patient, man, just to go in, get that grab, add on some damage. But I think really what it comes down to is Dill needs to start guessing. Oh, uh, uh, that was a, uh, I'm gonna call it coverage. Yeah, it's not often that we get to see the first grenade come out as a very useful item to cover space, but lo and behold, Sakurai decide we get to see the grenade come in clutch and continue this damage extension for Dill. The string of projectile hits really coming in to further this lead that he has, and it's really not by a lot. <gasps> oh, this is going to be big! That could and be that's it. it! Even wow. with good DI, that's gonna be it. Rafi stays alive, manages to continue to represent and aim well. As and we that was like, losers. he air dodged every time, every time, every time. And Rafi knew, he knew that he was going to jump right there. One step ahead, gets the up air, ends up closing it out. Both of those stocks so early, just fantastic play from Rafi. Guaranteeing himself top five right now and still a shot at taking it all. He's one of the only New England people left. He needs to stay strong if he wants to show his region some love. All right, so for those of you who are still tuned with us, thank you for tuning in to Xeno Saga 12. We will be having our final switch of the night for commentators, so make sure to stay tuned. You'll be seeing the rest of the evening as best of five sets commentated by Austi La Vista and D1. This has been Hangman and Salty Fun. Enjoy the rest of the evening.
back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here for the top six of Xeno Saga 12. That's right. Woo. Yo, D1, how are you feeling, man? I mean, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. I got to chill upstairs. I saw some crazy matches. I have to say, man, uh, Dill, being a person that I used to actually play Brawl back in the day with when I lived in New York City, I was definitely pulling for him, wanted to see him do well. Plus, New England, these guys are the invaders, right? So I'm not trying to see them, like, invade the bracket. Oh, but, right, right. But they're doing really well right now. I was right? actually waiting for Dill to beat him so it could be like, okay, so top six is literally just going to be five New Yorkers in a New England. But then Rafi came through, and now we got an actual, like, battle going on. Yeah. So we got Pug West still sitting in Winterside. 